Hello, welcome to the Royal Road School of Carmelite Prayer, where today we will be listening to a sermon on God's law, the law of charity, given at St. Louis de France in Washington, D.C., by Father Robert. This sermon was given on the 29th of October, the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and it was based on the gospel passage of Matthew 22, 34 through 40. God's Law, Charity. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. So today we are meditating on the law. And after hearing today's gospel, we could wonder why the doctor of the law's question was a test for Jesus. He asked Jesus what the greatest commandment was. And it was a test, because the Israeli people lived strictly by the law. This law told them exactly what to do to resemble God. It was their master, what guided their lives. It was their way of seeking God. They initially had ten commandments which were given to Moses. They knew them by heart. But to enable the people to live them in a more practical way, these commandments were dissected into smaller laws, and really what the people ended up with were 613 laws. These laws required a daily effort, starting with the Shema Israel, Listen, Israel, the Lord speaks. They all knew this by heart. Starting with you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul, etc. Living out these 613 laws was a daily requirement, but it was just too much to remember. Yet you weren't allowed to forget. What the doctor was really asking was if these laws could be put into a chronological order that prioritized them according to their importance. This was the test. The doctor already knew the answer. He knew that the answer was complicated and complex. Jesus answered by first reciting the Shema Israel. He then went on to say that the second commandment is similar to the first, You will love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus summarized then for them all their laws into just two laws. If you look at the Ten Commandments, you will see that that is exactly what Jesus did. The first three commandments have to do with loving God. And the last seven commandments with loving your neighbor. Don't worry, I'm not going to embarrass anybody here by asking you to recite the commandments. But let me just say that you really should learn them. Jesus shows us that there is an intimate link between the love of God and the love of neighbor. He answers those who regularly go to church to pray a litany of rosaries and novenas And they leave them behind when they leave the church and close the church door. 
all their effort is really for naught, as it is not at all manifested in their daily lives. Their prayers are really worthless. God can't hear them. If in our daily lives we don't have the love of God in our hearts that guides our actions towards others, our life just simply doesn't make sense. We can be doing a million things for others without recognizing that God is the source. And so God can't see these efforts. But with charity, charity, or God's way of loving, everything changes. In Christ's response, he was saying that the only thing that counts is love or charity, the way God loves. When we love this way, our love flows from heaven and towards others. There are parents, for example, who give their children everything they want. And when these children leave home, they seem to stop calling their parents. Their parents are completely baffled as they feel that they gave their child everything that they knew how to give them. The only problem was that their love was conditional. God wants us to understand that he gives us his love. He gives us what we need and what belongs to another. In the story of Lazarus, the rich man did not go to hell because he was rich. He went to hell because he didn't give Lazarus, the beggar outside of his castle, the part of his riches that belong to him, to the beggar. Very often we have a home We have at home what really belongs to other people. If you just open your closet, for example, you will perhaps find clothing that you haven't worn in over a year that you keep there just in case one day. But that really belongs to someone else. Everything that you're keeping in your closet and not wearing, that is charity. A person who is open and ready to assume another. Maybe some of you have been to the Holy Land and seen the Jordan River, which flows towards the south. This river flowing towards the south has two arms, one that flows towards the Sea of Galilee. You have certainly heard stories of Jesus walking around this region. This arm is abundant with life, both above and below the water and it just keeps giving. The other arm, however, of the Jordan River flows into the Dead Sea. Here, there is no life at all. There is no transmission of anything. You are even warned to be careful as the water is very, very salty. So this is an example of love. When it's not true, nothing comes of it. To be true, it must be transmitted. Every day, God spoils us with his love. God's love is open and shared with everyone unconditionally. This is today's message. Love of God and love of neighbor must originate in God. Let's explain that. There are many who come to confession with sins relating to their neighbor. In other words, the last seven commandments. The confessor tells them that they don't have healthy relationships with others because their relationship with God needs work. To heal our relationship with others, we have to heal our relationship with God. If we don't take time for God, to dwell with him, I won't have anything to give others. My problem is not others. My problem is that I don't have a focal point. I don't have a guide. I don't have a true relationship with God. It's important to ask God to grant us the grace to live virtuously. 
It's like a church that doesn't reach out to those around it. It's a dead church. If here at Saint Louis de France, the neighbors have never witnessed the good coming from this church, there is still much work to do. Love isn't hidden. Love is like a wildfire. And as we have heard today, our love has to be something that others can truly witness. They can witness the good fruit. It is contagious. So here is the prayer. Ask God that you be filled with his love that can then be transmitted to others. The transmission of charity the way God loves. Amen. So this is a sermon on the law of God, the law of love, the law of charity, that was given at the French Church in Washington, D.C. on the 29th of October. And below you will find the original in French for those that may be interested. May God bless you and yours. Amen.